Hey traders, welcome to Trading on a Monday with Will Sebastian, pro multi-asset day trader, founder of The Trading Mentor. Don't forget, if you go underneath this video, my free training is there um, and you'll learn a lot from it. I promise you that. So Bitcoin going into this week, I did do a drawing update yesterday, but I wanted to elaborate slightly. Um, you can see where I've drawn the upwards trajectory out of this near-term downtrend, uh, taking us to our 40 MA. Um, I had mentioned a little bit of a uh, potential uh, drop there, a minor one. And you can see if you dropped your alert timeframes now, that's what's happening. Okay, it's it's essentially this. Um, coming into London, um, it's now 1018 GMT, coming into the London session, um, this kickback really isn't a lot. I think going into this week, markets are slightly tentative. You had CPI data favor a dollar fall, then PPI changed the picture slightly, although it didn't do anything. Um, and the, the Bitcoin strength has just followed up, mostly as a risk on asset. You would expect that with better US data. Same for the S&P rising, because people get a bit more confident um, and they just take their money and they invest it you know, in riskier assets uh, like Bitcoin is. So at this point, you had consecutive lower highs, lower lows, down and down and down and down and down. And for this to have continued, you would have really needed to see a continued um, short side bias or negative sentiment. Now, we know the um, the uh, Gox creditors situation is what <laughs> caused most of this. And it seems that's eradicated. It seems those fears have gone and people aren't really worried about it. Um, the momentum and the force at which this has you know, changed the trajectory overall, um, or at least in the near term, um, is, is very rapid. You can see how harsh that momentum is to the upside, okay? Technically, you are still falling over time, okay? But you're now not seeing those, um, those lower lows yet. You're starting to see higher lows. And if this comes slightly further up, you'll break that high, okay? And it will start to look like uh, an upside trajectory movement. Now, I would say I don't think it's run out of steam particularly. However, if you, you know, if you've got some gains on, on longs, you might have taken down here. Remember, it was a light long area, not entirely convincing because that market sentiment and the fact you had fallen so harshly. Um, but if you have some money on the table, you could consider locking some of it in. Uh, let's say you bought something like um, this area. OK, you bought on a dip over here. Uh, 57, 7, 80 or something like that, could lock in gains. You know, you've got a reasonable amount of profit there just in case, you know, the market pulls back under here. Um, reasonable chance that you might see a bit of kickback. Uh, it would probably require a reasonable sentiment change, at least on the day. We don't really have any extreme data coming today. It's more throughout the week um, for various areas of the world. Uh, but I wouldn't expect the pullback to be so vicious at this point because there really isn't that sentiment there. I think you've got room to the upside. I would definitely say if you're not going to lock in gains here and you're not going to exit or anything at all, uh, you might want to consider slightly higher. I mean, around 65 and a half, you have got, and if you shift your timeframes up, you've got key um, resistance. You're also coming into all your moving averages. So it's going to be a really contentious area, I would imagine, should you get slightly higher. That exists about 65 to 66,000, I would say. And it's just because if you look across the board, you've got various areas of rejection. It's it's what we call a pivot zone or a flip zone. It's where buyers and sellers uh, flip between. And you can see that the reaction has been experienced there multiple times already. We've had it. You can also see your stock oscillator is already very high. So you're moving well, well into overbought territory. Um, if when we get there, if and when we get there, the candle looks still like a really harsh green bodied one, you might want to just be careful on your size um, because the momentum at which this flies through is probably going to dictate the inherent risk of the market and ultimately probably the chance of you rallying to previous highs where prices got stuck several times. I would say if you get a sudden change in, in um, Fed sentiment, if you like, that, you know, bouncing off from this key level here would form the basis for a newfound uh, market correction in the longer term. Okay, so I mean, Bitcoin is inherently a risky asset, like I said at the start. But if you were going to short this and you need an area to do it, I mean, going on to the 618 bid, 
you know, is, is sort of ideal. It's not to say that this is going to be the area it falls from. Again, it's going to be dictated by sentiment. But I don't think you quite have the force or market reaction at this 50 fib now. Um, I think it's got a little bit of room to run. Um, and I think you can see that as well with the dollar weakness. As I said last week, I think it's got a little bit of room to go before you see a market turn or a market flip. Like I said as well, there's a lot of data coming this week. So really, I would expect perhaps you'll see it slightly higher uh, before you see any any kind of move. But if you do start to see a um, change in market sentiment rapidly, like you did, you know, not many people saw the GOX situation, creditors coming in, then you may see something like that. This isn't really a credible uh, long term downtrend because you haven't hit that high and you haven't had a second low either. I've just drawn the parallel lines in you know, as it fits because of what you can see to the downside. Um, if you included the previous low like that, it would be even steeper because they would need to be parallel. Nonetheless, it still represents the same area. So a newfound downtrend would look like that. And lots of analysts say, you know, it, you would expect these assets to have some reasonable correction at some point because all you've seen, you haven't really seen a massive correction yet. That fall has just been rebounded straight away. And all these falls over here represented simple sideways movement, sideways trajectory. Nothing really majorly concerning. OK, so in other words, if you want to buy it, I think you're a little bit too late to do that. Um, it's already rallied significantly. I would consider taking your profits. Um, you know, if you want to go to the moon, whatever. But will it get there? It stopped there several times at the highs. You could have short side entries coming in or mass liquidation at that point, uh, either stocks being above the high or around it um, or, you know, people just killing off their, their longs for gains. Obviously, both of those things provide a change in, in, in the market. So, yeah, I mean, comes up here. You could consider ultimately shorting at the max value, OK, the highest price that has ever been experienced with this asset um, or thereabouts. Uh, but it's really up to you and your risk appetite. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to trade safe, trade small, especially on crypto assets. Um, if you want to learn to trade, go underneath. I'm going to be live on Zoom in a few hours. See you soon.